All right. Where is that fan at? Day seven. I did some preliminary stuff before I came on camera. A lot of it's boring and I'm not going to tell you anything anyway. I did a bunch more um, sanding and mudding and getting everything nice and smooth, which is not really necessary. But since this is this outside area where it's going to be painted, where, yeah, that matters. So while I was sanding and mudding and all that stuff, I just did that all. So it doesn't have to be that nice and neat. Um, but when you know you're going to be putting tile on it, you have to make sure that it's flush and straight and plumb and level and all that stuff. I tore off the rest of the ceiling stuff. And again, um, I'm questioning whether this is a paintable surface, but um, I think it is. I think once a primer coat goes in, it'll knock down a lot of that stuff. Although that stuff, I have to mud because I use nails and I don't like nails on sheetrock. Mm, but I'm going to take that same, I'm going to take that same and I'm going to redo that little boogering that I did there that has to be redone for sure. So I'll do that while I'm waiting for my red guard to dry because today is red guard day. Um, yesterday before I left, um, I had some thin set, I think I showed it, that I screed it out on the top of here to get this nice and level and there was some, uh, quarter inch backer board up under there and then I just kind of smoothed it out. So now I can put my level on it and I have a level curb. I had some extra thin set. So I went ahead and just used it on here. There's no reason for that, that much on here. Um, but if you haven't watched my videos before, let me explain something. When I red guard, hydro band, aqua defense, any of that stuff that I use, cause you know, I go back and forth using different product. Um, red guard sticks to um, this mortar. And because I did an experiment with four different types of waterproofers, about a month ago. It's on my channel. You can go look for it. And then I broke those pieces of mortar up and I realized, because I didn't know that red guard would actually impregnate into the mortar. I thought it was just kind of a, because, you know, it's a topical membrane. So I thought, you know, you could take a, a knife um, scraper, scrape up part of it and peel it off. And you cannot, you can, it cannot be done because I tried it and I used a uh, six inch tapey knife and I just like banged on the surface of all four of those products. And I think only one of them came off relatively easy. The other ones didn't. Having said that, I didn't trust that this was um, a really tight transition to the rubber pan wire. So by default, I've always screeded out some thin set because the thin set um, not only sticks to the pan liner really well, and you have to really push on it to get anything off of it. Um, but also because the red guard seems to adhere to thin set a little bit better than it does um, the mortar. But now I know that's not true because, as I said with that experiment. So where that transition is, to me, that's Achilles heel. You have rubber pan liner up against mortar. And so I just always felt better about, and then when I slather in my red guard, I make sure I hit the bottom of the wall board and I make sure that I hit this crease really well. So it really, really is a waterproof system. Same could be said around the drain. So what I do to make this waterproof, um, I screed my thin set up to the bottom edge as close as I can get it to the drain. And then my paintbrush goes in there and I push in red guard around the perimeter of the drain. Um, then, uh, when that's dry after a couple coats, then I'll screed some white silicone and I'll use my finger to kind of spread it out onto the pan itself. And by doing that, I know that I have 100% waterproof because this is Achilles heel as is that, and those are now taken care of. So I have no compunction about, um, doing it the way that I do it as opposed to bonding flanges and divot system and all these other methods that um, have come out lately. I've been doing it this way for a good part of seven, maybe eight years. And, you know, I never had a failure, never had a pan leak. Anyway, getting on to, and so I'm just supplying some information. I'll go, I'll probably physically go through a few of these steps 
except for painting on the red guard because it's kind of boring. Um, but there's, it's really hard to show some of this work. That's why I'm explaining some of it. And yes, I have my wall board up off of the pan all the way around. My tile gets pushed up under that. The whole floor gets grouted as you'll see later on. Um, and then my wall tile overlaps onto that. So that's about it. So all my wall, my corners go on with a brush as does my niche goes on with a brush as does my, my floor goes on with a brush. But the walls, I do the roller and I have another sleeve for that roller. And so I'll hit all the corners and all that stuff first and then I'll do the roller overlap on that. And yeah, let it dry for about an hour or so with a fan on it. Um, come back in, do another coat. Same as the floor, same as the curb, and um, it'll be ready for tile. Yeah, I told you it was boring. It's even more boring when I get to the roller. The main reason I don't use um, what's called dam corners when you're building your shower and you have your pan liner coming up and you cut it and fold it over, there's this gap and this gap isn't filled unless you use dam corners which are a perforated type of um, rubber liner that kind of wraps between here and covers this whole area. Mm, I don't know. If you Googled it, you could see a picture of it because every Tyler basically knows that this, this part and that part is Achilles heel when showers leak. They have a tendency of leaking on those corners. I'm gonna say 90% of that is operator malfunction and the other part is because it's not waterproof. So people feel the need to use those corners um, before all this stuff is done to mitigate this issue. But I'm mitigated it already by doing what I'm doing now. My feeling is if I use those corners, you're already, you already have a failure. So what good do they, I don't know what good they do if you're doing this part correctly. I just don't see the point. Could you do them? Absolutely, all day, every day, and twice on Sunday. Are they helping your shower? Are they making it better? No, I disagree. It would be easy to do them if I thought they would do any good, but I don't, so I won't. But at the end of the day, you have to use your own common sense and judgment on how you build yours. I never advocate Strike that. I never say my way is the only way. Um, there are different ways to make it happen that work. This is just my particular way. And I always try and explain my rationale and logic behind how I do things. And you can accept it or do it a different way.
but I won't bore you. I get up this close I'll usually transition not always but I'll transition to a smaller brush so you can get up right up under right up under let those bristles go into the edge and if you get a little bit on the edge of the drain um, not to worry it is a stainless steel edge and uh, it will peel right off. In fact, I don't even recommend, sometimes I wipe it off. Sometimes I let it dry because if you let it dry, it'll peel off pretty easily. But it's inevitable you're gonna get some on the edge of it. Sorry, my lighting really sucks. I got one bulb right above me and it's not even a good bulb so yeah that's that's I'm I'm getting it into that edge as close as possible filling in as much of that white thin set as I can see and then of course the second coat goes on this is where I kind of wipe everything off I'm switching fingers around wiping off my fingers so I don't smear it all over but then I can wipe off right at the top the edge is going to get, this part, this edge is going to get covered up by um, tile anyway eventually. So I don't really worry too much about the outside part, but I'm showing it to you. That's pretty covered. And then the second coat will go on. One of the reasons we do two coats, the, um, the brush and the roller miss some areas you'll know when you start seeing it no matter what backer board you use and so the second coat ensures that you have a really good uh, layer there's not a particular mill thickness that i go by because again i've done experiments on all different products with two coats and two coats works um, this is achilles heel from this part point over and down this is where all failures happen Walls? Nah. Niche? Nah. None of this stuff fails. There's no reason to do waterproofing on these walls. See all this I have left? If I just stopped on the floor and say the ankle below and only did that, I'd have two thirds of that left. So I use it because I can, not because I think it's needed. We don't have failures on walls. I have yet to go on shower. A shower where the walls were failing. Tub? Yes, because tubs have that lip, and a lot of guys will set their wallboard on the edge of the tub instead of the top of the lip. Water wicks a wallboard, and yes, you have failures there. Showers? No. There's no reason to do all this except where I'm doing it now. This is where you want to focus all of your energy. And as I've said on very many of my videos in the past, 
think like water. If there's any way that water can aggress out of your shower, mitigate that aggress. However possible you do that, it doesn't really matter. You know, there's dozens of different ways, but um, think like water. If that's all you do, just think like water and mitigate those issues. You cannot fail your shower. And uh, your shower should be 100% functional before any tile. Think in those terms too. Is my shower currently, as I do my prep, right before I start doing my tile, is it functional? Can I actually use my shower and not have any leak? And if you can say yes to that, then you're outstanding and you have no worries. There'll never be a problem. Then go ahead and tile, and then tile is the wall covering to make everything look pretty. But by the time I get my second coat goes on here, this shower is functional. People hate my hands in my video. I don't know why, but I hate my face in it. And I know why. It is finished. The red guard is looking good, like I knew it would, because I use it all the time. It's not the only one I use. If you remember on that tray, which I took out of here, it was a gray color. That's Ardex. I like that too. In fact, I like it better. It doesn't have the fumes that Red Guard has. Um, but yeah, this second coat, this shower is functional. Right now, you could use a shower indefinitely. When I come here tomorrow, I'll, um, I think I explained before, but I over explain sometimes. I'll throw up ledger boards and I'll, I'll shoot a level to make sure that I have about two thirds, maybe a little better of my tile because it's a small tile that's going on the wall. So my ledger board will go slightly below that and then that way I can stack all my tile going up. Um, then by the end of the day, I could do this or I could do that and I might do both, but it depends on my time. Um, the next day is when I would start stacking tile again, if I haven't finished the first day, which I probably won't. Um, yeah, and then I can do this or that, or that or this, doesn't really matter in what order. As long as it always gets done, this is about three days of tiling because of the intricacy of some of this stuff, especially here, this is going to be a bear. Yeah. So probably four days and then another day, possibly two on this. So I'll get about maybe five days, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, about two weeks. Two weeks is about normal for a bathroom renovation, not just a shower. But I am out of here. I'm done talking. Hope you learned something and see you tomorrow. Hey, if you enjoyed that video and you learned something, consider being a Patreon member. Five, ten, fifteen dollars a month would help me greatly produce more videos. I make nothing up from YouTube at all. If you're gonna call me for advice, please donate fifty dollars for thirty minutes. My link to my PayPal and my Patreon account is down below. And if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell so you get immediate notifications as soon as I post a video. And thank you very much for your support.